Good evening, ladies, as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more Hearthstone Arena action. In this Hunter run, which I predicted would be a good deck that would go far, we played three Shamans in a row. The first one quit on turn one. The second one pretty much rolled over and died, although I did get a little bit lucky drawing a Dragonling mechanic on turn four. And then the third one beat me in a very annoying game. He hexed my Ragnaros. My Ragnaros missed his Fire Elemental... Um, I drew a buzzard after playing Unleash the Hounds, he had removal for all my hounds after I almost sealed the deal, and then he got a taunt totem at the end, it was just all bad stuff, but it's okay, I think the deck is still good, and I think we've got a decent chance. Chitlin's the Paladin, I'm not a big fan of being a hunter against Paladins, although the recruits, the saving grace is that the recruits do make your Unleash the Hounds a lot better, but they make deadly shots a lot worse, and then the, his hero ability puts stuff onto the board, whereas... Your hero ability obviously doesn't put anything onto the board, so it's, it's just kind of annoying to deal with. So here we have to make a difficult strategic choice. I can coin out a Grunt. The advantage is it would let me keep his recruits off the board. The disadvantage is that then on turn 2, I've got nothing, and on turn 3, I again have nothing. Whereas if I just wait to play this on turn 2, then on turn 3, I can coin a Yeti. And then on turn 4, I can play Defender of Argus as appropriate. So, it's a tricky call. We'll see what he does. I mean, if he plays something on turn one, that would definitely make him want to play the Grunt. But if he doesn't play anything on turn one, we'll see what I draw. I'll probably end up passing. I'm just hoping that the Grunt will kill off the Recruit later. If indeed he even plays a Recruit. So the first opponent we played in this arena did nothing and then left. We got down to the rope. And then he just quit the game. Hearthstone definitely has had some connectivity problems. That is a fact. Supposedly they implemented like a 60 second reconnect timer, but it does not work. You're still getting losses if you, if you disconnect in a game. The nice thing is that we're on my favorite map here, the vegetable squashing map. Really no other map is anywhere near as good as this one. I don't even know why. Oh, there we go. He's flicking cards. He's got Noble Sacrifice. I am sorry. Oh, uh, no problem. No problem, sir. All right. Well, Noble Sacrifice is going to make it difficult for me to keep his board clear, so we're just going to have to hope this Yeti on turn three is good enough. Crocolisk. Oh, it's actually super lame. Lol. All right. Well, we're just going to trot it out to die. Um, hopefully this thing with one health will then be fodder for Unleash the Hounds. I do have two of those Hounds in this, two Unleash the Hounds is in this deck. And I've got my endgame here so I can just survive. Oh jeez, this is getting worse and worse. So he's got this, he's got, he found time to play the sword. He's got this thing. Um, the secret will be a 3-2 because it'll get buffed by the Sword of Justice when it comes into play. Oh boy, this is a pretty bad start. If this had been a 3-2, uh, I would have been fine, but it being a 2-3 was just awful here. Luckily, I do have plays. I got 4 or 5, you know, and then I can kill Command in the meantime instead of one of those things if needed, and then 7-8. But it's tricky because all his minions are going to get buffed, so if he actually plays good ones, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. All right, so the Panther, I'm not that bothered by it. I mean, it will be good in a moment, but at least it's not good right away. So that's nice. It's gonna hit me in the face. Makes sense. Hi, main. Alright, so we got a turn six play as well. Let's do Defender of Argus. Flush out the Noble Sacrifice. Yep, yep. So I use up a charge on this sword, which is fine. But there's pl and I know he's not playing Truce of Champions at least, so that's good. Consecration doesn't work either. Hammer of Wrath would be an irritation. It would allow the Panther to kill this. It's gonna Cult Master. I'm actually okay with that. Simply because it gives him a card, which is obviously bad, but at least it, like, doesn't immediately screw me over. Unless he has a hand of protection down there. If he has a hand of protection, I'm gonna be pissed. Ah, is he gonna throw the... He's gonna, it looks like he's gonna actually hit my Yeti with the weapon, and then use the Panther to kill the Defender of Argus, which is actually pretty smart. That stops me from being able to do any shenanigans, because it clears my board. Hmm. Yeah, that was a good... That was a very smart way of doing the turn. Alright, so I could kill Command the Cult Master, but then I do nothing else. I could Wolf Rider the Cult Master and then do nothing else. Um. Yeah, I think we need to do this. 
Might as well, I need to use up all of my mana, because my mana card, my cards are so expensive, but I need to just distract him with these cards and hope I can catch up. But I'm, I'm on the defensive here. I'm basically hoping that he has a bad turn in here somewhere. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. He should have done this first before playing the Ventrico, because maybe he would have drawn something better to do with his time. Blessing of Wisdom on Cult Master to draw cards. That might incline me to kill it with Wolf Rider as opposed to playing the High Man. We'll see what I get. A Deadly Shot would be freaking amazing here. It did not happen, but okay, since I got something to play. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's do this thing. Let's do that thing. So at least you can't play minions, or at least you can only play like one overpriced minion. It's gonna play Sanjin, which is actually very irritating. So I can't kill it with Kill Command. This thing has to be really hard. I mean, I'm pretty much dead in a couple of turns. Oh my gosh. So... We'll drop this and just hope it distracts him. He can hit me for 11 damage. I'm down to 6 health. Oh, that was stupid. He just had a very strong start, I had a very slow start, and then he beat me down. So at this point, if, he, if the Avenging Wrath hits me enough times, I will actually lose the game on the spot. Oh god, that was a lot on the face. Okay. This is looking ugly. He's gonna, he's gonna go for it, huh? Can't blame him. He's threatening the win and Consecration kills me. I mean, it's just ugly. Sea Giant. That is unhelpful. <sighs> I can't play Kill Command and Storm and Champion. Alright, well, my only way... Oh, wait, no, that doesn't work. Um, the only way that I could conceivably survive is if I play Ragnaros here and it hits the Ventrico Mercenary, then he can get me down to one health. Nope, it hit the recruit. That game was freaking idiotic. Ah, I just died to a freaking random Ventrico mercenary. If I just had gotten Deadly Shot, I would have been totally fine. I had two of. Oh, you asshole! I'm not even gonna say. It. Well played. He's manner weaponing me to show me that he didn't need that stupid Ventrico mercenary anyway. What an asshole. Anyway, that um, if if I lose the next game. What, what a fucking douchebag. Remember, Chitlins, if you meet him in person, shit in his backyard. Um, if I lose this next game, I'm going to be really annoyed because I think I still think this deck is good. I mean, it's got, like, if we look at the curve, it's got, like, enough things to do early on and a really solid end game. Plus some good mid-game creatures like the Dragonling mechanics and the Yeti and stuff. Some decent removal. Honestly, two and two, considering I got a uh, win for free, is a little bit embarrassing, I think, with this deck. Um, yeah. We'll see what happens now. This would be, like, the most underwhelming arena run I've played in a long time. Especially after having two garbage drafts that, like, went to good results. I'm not going to spoil them, but you should, we should watch the last couple of videos. I'll be very shocked if this doesn't go anywhere. ZDM, the Dungeon Master of Sleep. I'm going to eat some Warhead Sour Jelly Beans. That my girlfriend gave me. They're a great candy. Okay. Well. We had a pretty bad start here against the Druid. I can't really play either of these. And again, I'm wishing this were a panda. Well, got the combo. My greetings. Greetings, traveler. People today are relentless. Alright. I hope he just shapeshifts here. Okay. That's good. Slow turn here for the opponent. No plays for me. I could consider playing the Owl. You know, I probably should have just played the Owl. 
Then uh, if it would have encouraged him to shapeshift to kill the owl to not do anything else. We must cleanse the sun so we're going to buff that pyromancer. And here. So we're going to go ahead and play a dragonling mechanic. So the idea here is hopefully he'll, give, he'll be distracted and take some time to kill off my minions. I'm getting very low on health just from that stupid pyromancer. And he is going to take the bait. And then, Pyromancer dies. Um, I am going to go ahead and call that a mistake. Because I don't think there was really any reason for him to kill off his own Pyromancer there. Let's play this, heal up a little bit. Suddenly I'm very glad that I got this Dark Scale Healer in my deck. I don't think a Druid should be that good at racing me out if all he's got to help is a Shattered Sun Cleric, but you never know. I do have to be careful. There's not much taunt in this deck besides the Defender of Argus. That's a good draw. Let's some trade. And he will. Hmm. Right, I'm going to play the Grunt here. Try to slow down the bleeding a little bit. He got what he wanted out of that bomber, which is one barrel on the frost will grunt so that he can shave it to finish it off. And he can even kill off my Yeti with that alchemist. That deserves a well played. well played. Okay. So Unleash the Hounds does not quite let me get a sea giant out here. Which is unfortunate. I could do this and Hounds for two cards. That let me kill off two of his minions. Yeah, let's just, or one of his minions. I'm actually just going to go for it. I feel like it's worth doing this because I can play a Panther for an extra card. Oh, multi shot. That would have been good to have at the start. Well, let's do this, get another card. And we're going to kill off his scariest minion. And pass the turn. So we've got the card advantage now, and the Defender of Argus provides taunt. With luck, I could even taunt that Sea Giant. Depends on what he plays. Nope, that's not gonna happen. Well, okay. Let's think about this very carefully. Hmm. I think I need to keep clear his board. So I want to do multi-shot for that. That leaves me with four mana. Okay. Let's see. Playing the Pyromancer doesn't actually help. So let's multi-shot first. Four mana left over. We can play Pyromancer. And Crocolis. And kill that thing. Just trying to keep the board clear so that my health total stays stable. He's got five cards to my six. Actually, he's doing fine on cards now. Because he was able to clear my stuff pretty efficiently. I need Deadly Shot. The story of my life is I cannot draw Deadly Shot when I need it to save my life. Hmm. The awkward thing is that Animal Companion will actually trigger Wild Pyromancer. Taking this thing down to six, taking this down to one. Hmm. Um, and then Sea Giant would cost six. That seems good. So let's do that. Got the pig, which is not really ideal. But it'll do. It'll do, pig. It'll do. Um, I can hit him in the face, but I think I'd rather just clear out this Boulder Fist Ogre. Oh, wait. Although the Pyromancer hits harder, and I'm wasting damage here, the Pyromancer also dies to stray swipes and to shapeshift. So I'd rather keep the thing that actually... I'd rather keep the 2-2 two -two than the 3-1. Uh, I 
Alright, we can finish off my 2-2. Two -two. What is with the Venture Co. Mercenaries today? Seriously. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and do the high main that I just drew. Drop Epic Defender of Argus down here. And um, I'm just gonna hit him in the face for 9 damage. That's a lot of damage, and he's really gonna have his hands full dealing with a 9-9 nine -nine taunt and a 7-6 taunt. He actually has an Iron Big Owl. That is ridiculous. Of course, silencing it removes taunt. So now he can't kill it with the Venture Crow Mercenary. That probably did not work out the way he expected. Or he'd hoped. I think Defender of Argus over Argent Commander was definitely the right draft, though. So I can at least pride myself for that. He's going to swipe something. What is he going to swipe? The high main. Um, yeah, that high main is going to survive. So I don't know what he was doing there. Weird choices by my opponent here. Weird choices. Okay. Well, note that I can actually give this owl charge, but there's really no point. Can I win? We got 8, 10, 12 damage. Not quite. Let's go ahead and use the Storm Pike to shoot to death the Owl then. Let's use the Tundra Rhino to get some extra damage out here. And we'll pass the turn. So we're threatening to win. And it's very difficult for the opponent to stop that. He needs like two removal spells at least to clear my board. Although if he does clear the board with like, you know, Swipe Swipe or Starfall Swipe or something, I might be in a little bit of trouble. Because it would take me like... You know, a few turns to kill him, because he heals for one every turn. Anyway, he doesn't have that, so Dungeon Master of Sleep dies, and we're up to three and two. I still feel good about my chances, folks. I have faith in this deck. I'm gonna need some more jelly beans. Mmm, tasty sour jelly beans. My girlfriend has the best taste in snacks. She got these, like, Reese's eggs. Like, re regular Reese's peanut butter cups, but in, like, half-egg shapes. They're so much better. Okay. I've definitely played against someone named Thrall before. I believe people can have the same name, so it's not, like, that big of a deal. Do you keep his hand? I'm going to mulligan back to five, but we'll keep everything else. Ah, finally a deadly shot coming a game late. Thanks, thanks, Deadly Shot. Oh, you won. I'd love an opponent who passed on turn one. That'd be awesome. Thanks! Awesome. Alright, so... No two drops here. No three drops, even. So, God, I don't even have anything to justify making that companion into a coin, with a coin. I'm gonna do it, though. So, Charging Pig... Trade for that fairy dragon. Try to just slow things down. If he plays something like a Scarlet Crusader, I will totally deadly shot it. If he plays a Harvest Golem, I will just cry. Nope, he's just got shapeshift. Perfect. Okay, so I will steady shot here. If I had a three drop, I would, you know, get the advantage. Unfortunately, my deck just does not want to oblige me with anything playable. So he passes the turn, and I pass the turn. We essentially each dealt a damage to each other. And now he's up first to play on turn four. Pass me that arc light. Well, that's not something I want a deadly shot. So the Yeti's a good drop here. Direwolf Alpha, thanks for showing up a turn late. Really appreciate that. Although, if I had played it last turn, it would just die to the Gnomish Inductor, which would be pretty sad. So maybe it's a good thing it came late. Starfall would kill that yeti. Wouldn't be a bad idea to do that if my opponent has that. If he plays a really big minion, let's say a Venture Co. frickin' mercenary, I finally have got the deadly shots to deal with it. But if he plays something like a Fen Creeper, that would screw me up because I couldn't kill it with de I couldn't attack this to clear it up for deadly shot because of the taunt. And if he plays a Silverhand Knight, I couldn't kill it either because there's obviously two things that spawn there. 
Mm, so yeah, there's definitely some five drops you could play that would uh, leave me pretty unhappy. Now, Unleash the Hounds is actually pretty good with Direwolf Alpha because you can form a conga line and then have them all get buffed as, as they run into stuff. Time waits for no one. He seems to have no play he really likes, though. He hits me in the face and plays Call Master. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. So I don't want to kill this thing. I could Unleash the Hounds, Direwolf, that, that's dumb. I can make Tundra Rhino to kill the Cult Master, but I don't like leaving this at one health versus a Druid. Not only does it die to Shapeshift, but it also dies to Swipe. So what I think I'm going to do instead is just keep it simple, keep it safe. Let's use the Wolf Rider to kill the Cult Master. Let's kill off the Snowmush Inventor. And let's just simply play a Wolf. The disadvantage of playing the Wolf is that uh, when I play Unleash the Hounds, you don't get to pick where the Hounds go because this is a spell. So they're just all going to end up to the right. So I can't drop the wolf in the middle of two hounds, but still, it's uh, I think it's worth to put a minion down. Swipe will let him clear my board, and it appears that is what he has. In that case, though, I'm still fine, because I'm pretty high health. He's got no minions. And then I've got deadly shots ready to frickin' roll. Haven't really had any boss deadly shots yet in this arena run, but I'm ready for those iron barks. Yep, there's just the board clearing swipe. Swipe, such a good card. Luckily, though, I have a 5-drop to play. It'd be nice if I had a Savannah High Main, though. That would be pretty great. This time, though, I've got all my spells. And then the Tundra Rhino. Nope. Nothing doing. I just play the Tundra Rhino. A little bit unimpressive as far as 5-drops go, because I don't have any beasts coming up anytime soon. Obviously, the Hounds already have Charge, so this ability doesn't matter for Unleash the Hounds. This could be good with Unleash the Hounds as well. Buff up two of your dogs. Deal some extra damage. I really just hope he plays like an Ancient of War or something and I kill it with Deadly Shot. That would be that would be the best. Or like a War Golem or something. Just go kaboom, baby. What I don't want him is to do is play like a bunch of like stuff with two or three health. That's where Unleash the Hounds wouldn't quite be effective enough and then Deadly Shot wouldn't work. Although Multi-Shot could work. You know, I don't know. I've got There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that I've got that I can, that I can do to deal with the situation. All right, well, he's just going to play the Stormpike Commander and shoot my guy. Ah, oh, that's actually not bad. So I can't... I mean, I could Deadly Shot. That just seems really silly. An overkill. I could trade that. I don't really want to do that, though. I hope I get a I hope I get a beast. Beast would have charge here. If I can throw away some crappy beast, like a... Bloodfen Raptor or something. Or a Crockle Disc. That'd be great. What is he doing? I was going to Innervate. Right. Druids have that. I forgot. And a young priestess. Hmm. Well, that actually is lovely because essentially that just enables my multi-shot. Now, the problem with multi-shot, okay, before I jump to this decision, is it leaves me with three mana, which is awkward. I can't play these four mana minions. If I want to play one of them, I can't multi-shot. But I'm going to multi-shot here. It's just a little bit too good. Clears his board. I now have um, two deadly shots ready to roll. My bow is cocked, my gun is loaded, I hunt alone, and we're gonna destroy that iron bark. Just play it, man. Yes, be an iron bark. You just top decked an iron bark. Come on. Oh my god. Sweet, sweet, sweet justice. This is. I don't know. I should call this arena Venture Co. Headquarters. With all these Venture Co. Mercenaries, it's like seriously every single opponent is dropping them against me. Well, we got high mains. Two of them. And... Ragnaros, still in, in the wings. Waiting to show up. Anytime you want to come, guys. Oh, man, does he actually have a Wrath to finish this off with? Or a Moonfire? Nope, he's just preparing himself. Hey, hey, hey! That's pretty good. Druids have a real devil of a time dealing with Ragnaros. I mean, you either need to throw two spells at it, or you need to have naturalize. Silence does not work, then he's just an 8-8. Eight, eight. 
That's one of the cool things about this card. Silencing it is not super effective. So yeah, he's in a lot of trouble now. I've got this for extra burn debt damage. Got this to kill iron barks. Really, the only thing you could, I could see him having that would actually help is if he had iron bark and like a cheap minion for the remaining two mana. So a deadly shot couldn't kill the iron bark. What to do? Boy, he's really thinking about something. Not much to think about, buddy. You gotta kill that Ragnaros. He's gonna swipe it. That's swipe number three, ladies and gentlemen. Just point that out there. And then that's swipe number four. Okay, he could actually win the game now with that freaking nonsense. Four swipes. <sighs> I mean, I'm still winning. But four swipes. Seriously? Okay, we're gonna do this, this, that, and that. Quite a lot of board presence. Survives against swipes number five. Survives against starfall. So pretty safe from removal unless he has a bunch of single target removal. Still got deadly shot to clear out iron bark protectors. Got this for some more burn damage if he plays a bunch of minions. Steady shotting and then all this is a lot of damage. Should be good. There are very few things he could do here. Alright, does he have more minions to thwart my deadly shot? He does. He has a cobra. Uh, Alright. Well. Let's fling a deadly shot here. See if we get lucky. We do. Alright. Well, this ought to do it then. Oh, I, did, I screwed that up. I only get one hound because I killed the thing first. Anyway, luckily it doesn't actually make a difference. And I probably would have won even if the deadly shot had hit the Cobra, but that made it a lot easier. Alright, good game. Good game, Thrall. 40 gold quest. Yippity skippity. Well, at the very least, we made it to four wins, which is alright. I just had better hopes for this deck than that, so I'd like to win more. Three more. Really, I'm just gonna say I want to win three more games. Normally, I'm much more pessimistic than this, but I, I feel like this deck's good enough that it should it should be able to make it through. And I think, again, Ragnaros proved to be the better card than King Crush would have been. Because I believe I did play him on turn 8. I believe. So, he was just, he did the same exact thing King Crush would have done, but a turn sooner. Alright, finally, we have some early plays. Access the Priest. I wonder if he's going to access a question. <laughs> okay. Which do you play on turn two? I think the Pyromancer is important because if you're if the opponent does play a 2-3 in response or a 3-3, three, three, it's really important to be able to just kill it. And this you can save for later in the game when you really need a taunt. It's better to do it then than to have it just die up front for no reason. Is someone injured? Well, that definitely seals the deal. So we are playing a 3-2, trying to kill the North Shire Cleric. So we'll see if he has Shadow Word Pain, Power Word Shield, or Coin into Shattered Sun Cleric to protect the North Shire Cleric. If so, then Wolf Rider will have to kill the North Shire Cleric. I mean, I could also use Deadly Shot, potentially. I guess I think Deadly Shot is the more valuable card, most of the time. Oh, he doesn't have an answer. Well, he kind of does. So the Swordsmith buffs the Cleric, so at least they trade. But that's that's pretty good. I'm quite content with that. I could make a Wolf Rider to kill, kill this and then kill that. Hmm. Or I could just play this and this. Yeah, let's actually just do the Wolf Rider thing. Taste my steel. So we're going to card up here. Pretty happy about that. Especially because I feel like I'm, you know, the more likely person to win. If uh, we can make it to the end game, he's gonna use his coin here, hopefully for like a Chillwind Yeti or something. Silver Moon Guardian. Well, the awkward thing here is if I deadly shot, I will kill this thing, but that will also cause uh, the Pyromancer to die. So this this Iron Beak Owl arrived in a timely fashion. We're gonna silence off that Divine Shield, trade, and play this thing. So no Holy Nova just yet. He has used his coin already. Holy Nova would be good next turn, because it would kill off the Dragonling and then these two minions. So hopefully he'll play something that I can trade against these. Or trade these against.
If he plays a Senjin, Light Spawn, or a Yeti, I would kill it. Thought Steel scares me because there's two Hounds he could have stolen. Two High Mains he could have stolen, and a Ragnaros he could have stolen. So there's actually a lot of good stuff he could have stolen. Um, I will play this. Uh, but uh, out of respect for Holy Nova, I'm not going to play the Leopard Man. Holy Nova is obviously what he'll play here if he has it. Unleash the Hounds is actually playable if he has that. If he if he if he actually thought stole Buzzard and Hounds, I'm gonna flip a bitch. He actually thought stole Buzzard Hounds. Are you mother fucking kidding me? <sighs> the odds of that are very small, but this allows him to clear my board in roughly the same way that Holy Nova would have, except that also he drew four cards. So you know that happened. So he's very many cards ahead now. And he's got a pretty high life total, so I can't exactly, like, race him to death. All I have against him is a little bit of a board edge. That I can maintain one time with Deadly Shot if he plays a single big minion. I cannot believe he's thought stole Buzzer Downs. I, I mean, maybe I could have played around that, I suppose. But. Let me change your oh, come on, Shadow Priest. That's, that's excellent. I'm so glad that happened. You don't even know. All right, well, here what we have to do is kill command this thing. Do that. There. There. So it was canny of him stealing the Leper Gnome because it means that I took the damage instead of him, so he's preserving his life here, realizing that my only hope of winning is to race him out. He is the priest, so he can cancel my hero ability, so unless my cards are monumentally more efficient than his, I'm going to be pretty screwed. Just me and Mr. So this thwarts my ambitions for Deadly Shot, but it would make Unleash the Hounds better if I top-decked it. Ah, he cannot heal himself anymore. And I actually got to unleash the hounds. Well, we have to do this. I can't wait any longer. We get two cards. Hopefully I'll get a beast in here. Nope. Could have been a panda. Ah, thank goodness. All right. uh, pretty much any beast is fine here. Charging pig? Sure. All right, so do we do we stop to kill his minions? Or do we just go all to the face? So we got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is it half-life? But then I don't have any more burn potential after that. So let's hedge my bets a little bit. I'm going to actually do this. And... Send the rest in his face. So I just sacrificed one point of damage here. I really hope he doesn't get any Holy Novas. He has not seemed to have it yet. A Holy Nova and he wins the game, basically. Storm Pike Commando is also pretty good for him, lets him kill an extra minion this turn. But, if I get another Charging Pig, he's actually in a lot of trouble. So I'm getting him down to 8 health, this would get him down to 4 health, if it was a Charging Pig, so... I have to be careful now, if I play Dark Scale Healer, he actually draws a card. Oh, that wolf is really, really good. The bear is not the greatest. But the wolf is amazing because it gives me two extra damage. And every extra point of damage matters for a lot here. So now what happens is he's dead in two turns. It's a steady shot. He can clear my board re with relative ease. But I'm just killing him in two turns with steady shot. So he needs healing. Or to place a ton of power on the board. Enough to kill me in two turns. He doesn't really have that much power right now. And he is going to have to lose the Stormpike Commando. I said a... Well, I hope he gets this, because this thing doesn't make a difference. If he gets the deadly shot, though, he gets to kill an extra minion, which is annoying. Okay, so there's the mind spike. He can use the commando to trade against the bear. North track cleric. Kill the crocolisk. And the dragonly mechanic will kill the hound. I'm going to choose to do it that way. Interesting. And he is, in fact, going to play the Dark Scale Healer to heal his stuff and draw two cards. Okay, so that's what he got. He got a Dark Scale Healer. Got 
to oh you know what i forgot that it heals his face oh my gosh that's actually really good i wish he had gotten deadly shot instead that's an extra turn that i need to steady shot him which is very irritating ah hi main very very good draw here so he's got to deal with that of course you could mind control it he's got all these cards in the universe if there was a mind control in his deck he probably has it but if he doesn't have mind control i might be all right even if he has mind control he'll deal four six no, he's got a power ritual, so no mind control, thank goodness. Is he going to go for inner fire here? Does that, is that what he has? He have divine spirit, inner fire? That would let him win the game. But he has to kill this. The thing is, this is actually threatening him with damage. So he has to either play a taunt or something. He's going to circle of healing to draw another card off the North Shard Cleric. Man, the fact that, you know, if this had been a panda, it wouldn't have healed. Uh, he would have stolen it, and it wouldn't have healed him. And then I would have been in much better shape. He's going to Shadow Word Death to kill the High Main. But now, of course, he has to deal with the Hyenas. So one of them can get Mind Spiked, but the other one needs to be killed by a minion, which is good. Because every... Oh, he's actually going to... De... Mm. That was a mistake. He should have Mind Spiked the Hyena and hit me for with the, with the healer. That would have been four more damage for me. All right. Unleash the Hounds. Wins on the spot. All right, that was a bit close. Then again, considering that he frickin' thought stole Buzzard Hounds and got to actually play it, uh, the fact that I won that game is pretty impressive. And just goes to show, I'm gonna keep on harping on this, that the deck is a good one. It, it, it withstood pretty much the worst thing that could possibly happen to you. All right, five and two. Even if I lose now, still pretty solid, but I'd like to win the next two games. This is this is the most that I've wanted to win in a long time. We're up against another paladin, Pugin. <laughs> oh, that's that's a funny that's a funny name. All right, hopefully this paladin doesn't have a rip roaring start the way the last one did. I will actually keep the buzzard, not because I'm gonna play it on turn two, but because I just want it so that if I draw the hounds, I can actually just get my combo out. And I've got two hounds in the deck, so it's only a matter of time. Well, not necessarily. They, they could be at the bottom of the deck, but it's a reasonable likelihood that they are in the top half of the deck, and I will draw them soon. So, I could coin the companion on turn two. And hope that Somewhere in my first three draws, I get a two drop or three drop. A second animal companion would be great. A wolf rider would be fine to keep his board clear. Pugene. Ah, <laughs> uh, Pugene. Uh, turn one, there's lots of options, so I can understand why he's thinking so much. Okay, great, loot hoarder, awesome. So I'm not going to coin anything out. I could have coined it out so I'd be ready to kill a, loot, a recruit, but we're going to just leave it alone. Keep that coin, maybe, maybe for turn seven Ragnaros, who knows, and just play loot hoarder on turn two like normal folk. He's hovering over this reinforcement. Oh my god, come on, buddy. Come on. You can do it. Geico can help. What's the hold up here? Is this guy a griefer? Or is he actually thinking about the cards in his hand while hovering over the reinforcement? No, he's gonna reinforce, okay. Glad that happened. So what I could do is I could actually coin into the companion anyway for a chance to get a pig and kill this recruit. I will do that. I just don't see how else I'm using the coin. And I gave myself a chance to keep his board clear, which is great. And um, I can still play the loot hoarder on turn three. So all that really happened is I lost the coin. Not the end of the world, though. Now, you might say, well, Boris, why not keep his recruits alive? That makes Unleash the Hounds better. The old philosophy, folks, a good option now is better than the best option later. Well, that pig was great. So it traded with his pretty good three drop, the bear, and it also killed a recruit. So I'd say that was a victory for the animal companion play 
And he has no good four drop on turn four. He's going he's gonna to pass the turn. He passes the turn. All right. So I could, or Defender of Argus, to buff the Loot Hoarder and let, let it kill the Paladin and, and survive. I could also save the Defender of Argus and just play Yeti. And in fact, I'm going to do that. So let's actually trade this off. Draw a card. Deadly Shot. Good to know. Good that I'm killing off his recruits. Makes Deadly Shot more likely. Come on, play a Ventrico, motherfucking mercenary. I dare you, Pugene. I dare you. Everyone's doing it. Everyone's doing it. You know who's the only person who's not doing it? You. You're the only person who's not playing Venture Co. Mercenary. I think if I can remember, I'm going to call this run Venture Co. Headquarters because seriously, that was ridiculous. Come on, buddy. Come on, Venture Co. Mercenary. Just drop it down. Boop. And then... Oh, that's almost as good. Almost as good. That's that's fine. That's 100% fine. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just go boop. Hit him in the face for four damage. Steady shot. And I might say, well, Boris, what if he plays something bigger later? Play something bigger later, then I'll deal with it then. But that was a really good answer to his five drop. So I took it. Got to wait three more turns for Ragnaros because I used the coin early on. But I think the coin was, was well worth it there. Worked out quite nicely for me. I wonder. And uh, the Buzzard Hounds is ready to go. If he plays a lot of minions, the, the Unleash the Hounds can actually make the Sea Giant like cheaper. Like If you play Unleash the Hounds for four hounds, it, it costs you two mana, but reduces the cost of Sea Giant by four. So I actually have a constructed deck I, that I use in my Quest to Legend series, where I did just this. All right, he insists on being a dickbag with these six toughness creatures that Defender of Argus plus Chilwin Yeti is not quite adept enough to kill. Can't play the Sea Giant. So we're going to do a pretty lame turn here, since I can't kill this. I mean, I could have unleashed the Hounds to kill it, but that would have been obviously dumb. Just go ahead and hit it, and then hope for the best. I'm not a super big fan of the fact that I got he left I left him with a Sven Creeper, but then again, if he puts a Divine Shield on this to protect it, then, you know, Unleash the Hounds will work just great. Alright, he's his Hammer of Wrathing for a card and up. It's fine, he's gonna make a Recruit, that's also fine. I'm feeling pretty good about things, so here we could, um... Buzzard Hounds for two cards. And then I can still play a Sea Giant, can I not? I would... Oh, yes, that works. Because, well, let me just make sure. I would make this cost five. Yeah, 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 so this actually works. I'm going to do this. Hounds, you have to, this is actually very tricky. When you have a Hounds with Sea Giant, you have to be super careful how you plan your turn out. Um, in fact, I can actually play Le Leper Gnome as well. And still squeeze a Sea Giant out here. And then we're gonna do that. Um, I don't really see a reason to throw this Hound away. So, let's just kill the Recruit that way. And the reason I'm killing the Recruit with this, instead of with the Defender of Argus, is to give them both a 3 health. Because if he has a Consecration, it'll kill- he might want to play Consecration, it'll kill a Hound, a Buzzard, and a Leper Gnome. He actually does do that, so because of my decision for how to deal to, to kill off his recruit, I get to keep an extra minion on the board, which I think is pretty important. Does he have a humility for the sea giant? He actually doesn't. This guy is about to be one very unhappy camper because I can play Ragnaros here. Yeah, let's just do that. Alright, well, I think I'm just gonna hit him in the face. This is a lot of damage. He's down to six health. I actually could win on the spot with Rag if with a one in three odds. All right, I killed the worst minion. That's fine though. I mean, I'm killing him in. Well, I'm killing him next turn with Steady Shot and Kill Command, because I have a Beast, Steady Kill Command and Steady Shot. So he has to have healing and clear my board, which is pretty much impossible. Let's just go ahead and say it's impossible for him to not lose right now. Equality Consecration. Oh yeah, Equality Consecration Earth and Ring Farseer, I suppose would allow him to survive the turn. Um, so yes, the, the, those three cards are in Stampede and Kodo, not gonna do it, so it kills my Defender of Arcs, who cares? My shield for That's a bunch of taunt, who cares? Yeah, it's over. 
he did a pretty good job hanging on in there, but this is fine. So again, Ragnaros is better than Big Game Hunter because I dropped a turn earlier. Granted, all Ragnaros really did was pull a Dragonling mechanic, so it was kind of irrelevant. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe that wasn't really a deciding situation. All right, well, that was a smackdown of epic proportions. My opponent's probably sitting there thinking, well, that was dumb. My opponent played Buzzard Hounds, Leopard Gnome Sea Giant, then followed up with Rag. Kind of awful. But you can see uh, we're up to six wins. So we were at two and two. We got up to two and oh. Then we lost two games. We're at two and two. And then we won four in a row. And I, I feel pretty good about my chances. I mean, you can always lose with a bad draw or just with a crazy opponent. But I feel like my odds are better than 50%. Well, my odds are probably lowering a little bit now that we're seeing a mage. So, Kiasu the mage. The only question is, do you keep Deadly Shot? I don't like keeping Deadly Shot early on. We're going to pass it. There's two of them in the deck. Hopefully, I'll draw it if I need it. We have 2, 3, 4. Yeah, not the greatest 2, 3, 4 ever. But if this thing actually survives and I can actually play Defender of Argus on turn 4, buffing two minions, that'd be great. Please just don't play a Mana Worm. Please, 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 please. Please. Thank you. Oh, man. All right, so we got Unleash the Hounds. I only have one Buzzard in the deck. So not super likely to get that combo. But still, Unleash the Hounds, even without the Buzzard, is a totally fine card. It also synergizes with Sea Giant. So uh, that's cool. All right, she's got Sorcerer's Apprentice. I am not going to hold out for this Defender of Argus thing. We're just going to go ahead. Well, I could. I can actually... Can actually hit her in the face. Hope that she thinks this is too valuable and trade it off, and then try to put Defender of Argus on it next turn. Man, what are the what are, what's the risk? I'm risking Shattered Sun Cleric. Yeah, I don't know. We're just gonna kill this. Keep it simple. Keep it safe. So Defender of Argus is probably gonna drop next turn. I don't want to play these yet. Um, and then the Panther should kill pretty much any four drop. Yep, yeah, that'll do, Pig. That'll do. Not the most impressive use of Defender of Argus, but note that I would be much worse off if that had been a, um, what's his face? Argent Commander there. So I actually drew the Buzzard. I've got the combo now. Turn five is awkward. I really want to play the high main and I can't. This could have been, this could have been an Azure Drake. Both high mains could have been Azure Drakes and here I regret that because, oh my God, it would be so awesome to play an Azure Drake right here. Instead, unless I get a good top deck, I can play nothing, and I can get another Savannah High Main. Oh no. Oh my gosh. Well, one of those should have definitely been an Azure Drake. In fact, if I lose the game, it will be entirely because of because of that. Playing an Azure Drake there, drawing a card, and putting a 4 on the board would have been pretty spectacular. So she basically did nothing last turn. She has an Azure Drake. She knows what she's doing. Okay, well, let's see if she has a... Oh, of course I get the Wolf Rider turn late. Wolf Rider last turn would have been spectacular because it would have stopped her from playing the Drake or I would have had it on the field already. She, she could have fire blasted it and then not played the Drake or she could have played the Drake and I'd still have the Wolf Rider. Does she have a Polymorph? Because Polymorph is the only thing that answers it. Oh, of course she does. Well, all that remains to be seen now is does she have a second Polymorph for my other high main? And even if she does, I'm at a pretty high life total. So... Um, if she does that, I could still, you know, get, get out a combo later on, maybe, you know, some for some cards. What are you doing? There's nothing you can do, unless you have Wisps. Okay, let's see if she has another Polymorph. I mean, that is the only card, because Fireball will kill it, but then the Hyenas pop out. So Polymorph is the only card that will deal with that thing. Itch. Okay, no polymorph yet. Barrels hit my face, which is a little bit scary because now I'm below 20 health, and that's always scary against a mage because then you can just randomly lose to a couple of fireballs and a pyroblast. Don't have any healing in this deck except for Dark Scale Healer. So is she going to hit me in the face or is she going to hit that high main? That's the question. She thinks she can kill me. That is extremely worrisome because if she thinks she can, she probably can. She's freezing my high main to stop it from attacking. So that's actually good. That means she at least, um, that means at least she doesn't think she can, she doesn't value her chances of killing me that highly or else she would have frost bolted my face. Let's go ahead and do this. 
three cards. Really, I just need to hang on in terms of health. My health is really piss poor here. If I can hang on health-wise, I'll be fine. So do I play more hounds for more cards? I think I'm actually fine on cards. Let's just play Wolf Rider to kill the Drake. Let's use the hounds to kill off everything else. Pass the turn. So now, she wants to kill this high main, but she also wants... To, well, she can't kill the high main. That would be dumb. The hyenas would pop and I would draw two cards. So she has to hit the buzzard, which means that this thing actually survives as a 6-1. Hopefully, she doesn't just randomly kill me with two fireballs and a pyroblast. That would just piss me off if I lost like that. War Golem. I don't care in the frickin' slightest about War Golem. In fact, <laughs> I have my, my choice of ways of killing that thing. So one thing I've, I could do is I can actually play high main into this, pop hyenas, and then draw two cards. And then um, if I get a charging rhino, I could like play that, and then the, the, hy the hyenas would actually have charge, and then I could run it in and finish the golem off. I could also just deadly shot this thing, leaving me with six mana, which is a little bit awkward, but it would allow me to start getting damage through. I could also play Stormwind Champion, that would actually buff this up. Kill the golem, draw two cards. Swing for two. Steady shot. And it puts a 6-6 six, six on the field. Okay, we'll do it this way. Ah, I would have gotten the rhino, so that might have been the better way. All right, well, anyway, let's go ahead and steady shot. Swing with the buzzard. So now, what's funny is I don't quite have enough damage to kill her. So if she does fireball my face and as a, she has a pyroblast, she will win the game, which is really embarrassing. But if she doesn't have that thing, if she like flame strikes, let's say, my Stormwind Champion survives. Does she have a flame strike? Looks like she's gearing up for a flame strike. No, she's got a cult master. No flame strike. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. She's a fireball for is that for the Stormwind Champion? Please tell me it's for the Stormwind Champion. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, so she fireballs my Stormwind Champion, implying she does not think she can kill me. That is perfect. Okay. So we can now think very carefully. I could play Ragnaros, leaving me unable to deadly shot, but then I could unleash the hounds. That would let me draw two cards. I could use a hyena to kill the cult master. I could use one hound and this to kill that. I could swing for three and then rag to the face would take it down to 12. I don't really need cards though is the issue. So that seems a bit silly, but if I'm not playing the hounds, what am I doing? Well, I'm not doing really anything. What else am I doing besides Ragnaros? Well, I could Hyena the Cult Master. But I need to kill this Mana Worm. I don't want to Deadly Shot the Mana Worm. That seems silly. Although I do have two Deadly Shots. So I could Hyena the Cult Master, Deadly Shot the Worm. I still have seven mana. Not enough for Ragnaros. But it is enough, say, for the Dragon thing. For like a Yeti. Then everything dies to Flame Strike. I think I need to play Ragnaros here. How many cards do I have? I would go up to eight cards. Okay, yeah, we're gonna do this. And probably play Ragnaros. I need to actually be a little bit careful with my timing. Eh, queue up my actions. More faster. Oh my God, I didn't get to attack with the buzzard because the game just wouldn't let me. Well, I hope that two damage doesn't make a difference, because if it does make a difference, I'm gonna be pretty pissed. All right, well, let's see if she's got the burn for the kill or any something else. My burn potential is a bit limited here. She actually draws her other polymorph, which is, I'm gonna call that lucky. It's lucky that she didn't draw that earlier. If she had that against my high main, I would have been in a lot of trouble. She's an ancient watcher, which does nothing unless she can silence this thing. Wow, okay, well, things turned around pretty well. So kill command. Actually, let me just check for the win real quick. I've got two plus five is seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven damage. Ugh, if I had hit her, yeah. Well, let's drop this down. I don't have any beasts, unfortunately. Let's play Taunter just in case. Drop a Leper Gnome down here. Steady shot. I don't want to miss opportunities to steady shot. Swing, swing, and swing. Ah, uh, so she should be at 6 health if the game functioned correctly. She will drop to 6 after Lepernome dies. Fen Creeper? 
Not a big deal. She's actually gonna ping off the leper gnome. It's pretty ambitious. Okay, we got the win. Just gonna keep it simple here. Double deadly shot will kill her minions. Does she actually have a owl to silence this? No, she's a frost bolt. Uh, it's still the kill though. On the nose. So we're going to deadly shot number one, deadly shot number two. Steady shot. And punch through. Oh, I messed up. I should have killed her with the sheep. Well, anyway, the mage goes down pretty convincingly, I'd say. Although I almost lost it because I drafted two high mains, each of which could have been an Azure Drake, and one of which probably should have been an Azure Drake. But we made it to seven wins, so finally, I'm actually correct in one of my predictions. Thought this deck was good. I still thought it was good after getting some early losses. I'm gonna eat some sour jelly beans to celebrate. And now I don't care what happens. Mm -hmm. Tastiness. Weird names today. Weird names. Okay. I'm not gonna mulligan unleash the hounds. It's just too good of a card. And we actually have a pretty good early draw. We have turn one, turn two, turn three. So not not bad. Really all you could do is single target removal, but I actually don't care if he does that, because I've got so much endgame, I don't really mind if we break even early on. And it's hard for him to get ahead against a start like this. Possible though. Harvest Golem, Scarlet, Scarlet Crusader could do that. There's a couple of, I'm noticing, like, three drops that I really dread seeing. Scarlet Crusader is one. Harvest Golem is another. They're just really annoying to deal with. And can catch you up, even if your opponent has a fast start on turn one and turn two. So I should probably start evaluating them a little bit more highly. I'd love to see a shapeshift here. That would, that would give me a little bit of an edge. No, Monty Berserker, no problem, though. I don't really care about that too much. So the wolf really earns this keep right here. Let's my 2-3 trade against a 2-3. Of course he could shapeshift to catch back up, but that would be his entire turn. So I don't really, I'm not really bothered by that. Indeed, that is what he shall do. Um, so we have to think here, do we play wolf rider? Yeah, I'm gonna play it. So the obvious drawback here is that he can shapeshift to kill it, but I'm doing this as a, as a bit of a tech play. Basically, I'm, I'm saying, okay, you can kill that, but then that's your entire turn. And the other thing you could do is swipe, but if you use a swipe here, I'm fine with that as well. He's actually going to play a minion and try to go for a lucky flip. Let's see if he gets the lucky flip. One in three odds, he whiffs. Well, this is really great. Um, the wolf being silenced is annoying. I might have actually considered Unleash the Hounds in here, if the wolf worked, because one hound could kill that. Um, as it is, I can still Unleash the Hounds. Then I'm really setting up for Swipe. Although, I bet he would have used Swipe if he had it. So, okay, we're going to go ahead and unleash the Hounds here. The idea being that I can use the... Well, hang on. The Wolf Rider dies to Swipe and to Shapeshift. So I'm actually going to use the Wolf Rider, paradoxical as it seems, to kill the Knife Struggler. Use one Hound to kill that thing. Go ahead and put some damage on the face. Swing. And look at this. I mean, we're in pretty decent shape. He's below 20 health. I've got 5 plus 2 is 7 points of burn potential, so he's kind of like he's a 10 already. I've got silence to get past taunts. So I'm feeling pretty good about my odds in this game. Alright, the golem here is pretty sweet for him. Deadly shot's obviously not very effective. I could silence the golem, but then I can't even kill it. Let's just go ahead and um, do this. I'm going to hit him. I'm going to just play a dark scale healer. Wastes most of that ability, so it's just an overpriced show and yeti, but every point of damage I put on is a big deal For 10 mana if then this is a beast it would actually charge with the tundra rhino. It's like two four plus Five is nine damage granted. That's turn 10, but still All right, I'm trying to hit him in the face This is totally fine He's got to be super careful. He's below 10 health against a hunter now, of course druids with shapeshift can heal up a little bit, but it's got to be kind of careful here. I 
And I'm feeling pretty confident just because this, you know, with the silence could, could get me past taunters. Alright, so he's going to clear out my board. He's opening up wide for Unleash the Hounds. I do have another Unleash the Hounds in the deck, but I've already used one, so my odds of getting it are smaller. That thing actually got to hit him in the face, which is nice. And he's going to put up some taunts. Well, I actually kind of need to Unleash the Hounds. Oh no, he's going to protect himself from the Houndly Menace. Uh, okay. Well, we're just going to go for the throat here then. Because I've got three damage here. Well, five with the beast. Two damage here. So the key is you cannot miss any chances to steady shot. You have to steady shot. So we'll do that. Steady shot. So the idea now is that he shapeshifts to heal up to five. I drop an owl and kill command to win. Unless he has like a pair of savage roars, he cannot kill me this turn. He's got an iron bug, which is the win for Papa Boris. He could kill me next turn. He's got lethal for next turn because it's a lot of damage you drop down all at once. But it is not to be, my friend. Because Kill Command's a pretty good card. Well Alright, made it to eight wins. So that's six in a row. Six wins in a row. My confidence was merited, it seems. Getting close to 40, level 41. Woo! And I'm feeling pretty happy about that. If I'm going to open up my stats sheet. I always like to offer a little col color commentary about Papa Boris's lifetime stats. So Hunter used to be one of my best classes. So like one of the best Hunter strings I had was 7, 12, 7, 5, 9, 12, 10, 9. Then it sort of dropped off. After that it was 4, 3, 10, 5, 3. So like I had one 10 win run in my last 5, but the others were 3 to 5. So it's nice to get another another victory back here for a class that used to be one of my best. Mitchell! Nice creative name here. Mitchell the Druid. Okay, we'll keep the Yeti because I can actually coin that out on turn 3 if need be, but hopefully we'll uh, get some other plays. And we have the infamous Animal Companion with the coin, but then there's nothing to do the turn after situation. And these deadly shots are a little bit underwhelming, although later against Druids they'll be helpful. Leash the Hounds, great. If I get a buzzard, that'd be nice. What fun raptor? Well, the thing is, if I coin out into Animal Companion, I... It, I mean, the Leoc would be good, the pig would let me trade. I'm gonna steady shot, though, so that this is partially influenced by multi-shot right here. Because now if he plays another minion that, that dies to multi-shot, I can just coin multi-shot and catch right back up and then play the Yeti on turn four and be fine. If he plays something like a Scarlet Crusader or a Harvest Golem, it's a little bit more annoying. But I'm okay with it. He's going to Wild Growth. Well, that means I don't need to multi-shot. In fact, I can't. I will just happily play Animal Companion. And really, any of them would be decent against this Raptor. The bear? All right. Well, I want to love you. The bear said I can. And now he can shapeshift and kill off the bear with the help of that raptor, but that's, you know, 40% of his mana, and I'm fine with that. Due to the claws irritating, obviously that's a lot better than my bear. So we need to think here. Unfortunately, deadly shot, while I'd love to see it hit this, if it hits the raptor, it's really, really bad. Um, I could just multi-shot and use my bear to trade away. I'm going to do that. We're going to multi-shot here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If only I had, like, an arcane shot for this so I could actually guarantee the deadly shot hitting the druid. But no, can't do it. So yeah, we're gonna multi-shot. Not the greatest multi-shot of all time, it must be noted. But it's two cards for two cards, and again, because I have such good endgame, I don't mind making zero progress as long as I don't fall behind. I'd have loved to see him play something big and expensive, but instead he played that. So Unleash the Hounds is a possibility now. I'd love to get that with a buzzard, of course. My deadly shots, however, are now dead. Well, let's see if I can get a... If I can get a pig. Yeah, the pig's good. I want to kill this thing off. And I'm going to play this. You might wonder, Boris, why are you playing that Crocless? He'll just die to the Farseer. Well, it will just die to the Farseer, but then it'll be at one health, so unleash the hounds will be super effective. And again, I'm just happy to be biding time until we get a chance to play Ragnaros. All right, he's gonna draw two cards with that. That's unfortunate. Hi, main, huh? I've got enough health that I can afford to do this. Druids have a devil of a time of dealing with high mains. 
just an absolute devil of a time. You can kill it with Starfire or Starfall and then actually pick off the Hyenas with his minions, but still, that's like his whole turn and all of his attacks. So I'm fine with that. And then the board might actually be somewhat clear for Ragnaros coming down the pike. I must save He's actually going to silence this, letting his keeper trade. And he's going to River Crocolisk as well. So do you play Ragnaros here with the coin? I mean, he's got 357 power on the board, one of which will probably be dead. This guy is also playable. This plus Hounds would actually let me kill off... Well, I, wouldn't, I couldn't kill this guy, but I could kill off the other two. So I get three Hounds. Yeah, I could kill off two of his minions. Hmm... Yeti Hounds is not that impressive. I could do this coin deadly shot to also kill two minions, but that doesn't really achieve anything. I wonder. Yeah, let's just do Ragnaros here. Make him, make him spend a lot of resources killing it. Make him sweat. I just don't want him to hit. I don't want him to hit the face. All right, he hit that. That's fine. So he's got five power on the board here. He needs a little bit of help and both minions to kill this guy off. And I'm biding time till I can hopefully draw a buzzard, the buzzard, for Unleash the Hounds, or a sea giant for the hounds. Could be a mark of nature to help bring down Rag. He's got to do whatever it takes to kill Ragnar. So it doesn't matter if he three for ones, four for ones, five for ones. Makes no difference. He needs to bring this down. So does he have? Does he have enough damage? No, he deals three damage to it, so he doesn't draw the card off of it, betraying that he doesn't quite have any more juice in his caboose to bring this this thing down. Is he gonna do give it charge? No, he's just gonna do the taunting one. And oh, this is perfect. As long as he doesn't have a minion, perfect. Okay, so now. All right, it was a little bit rocky this game, but we are now where we want to be, like Visa. Now we can Deadly Shot to kill Druid of the Claw, bemoan the fact that Savannah Highmane is not an Azure Drake, and then play Shilman Yeti. We have card advantage, five cards to four. He's got the play and a bit of life advantage, but not enough life advantage for me to feel threatened. I've got a really good drop. I've got another Deadly Shot if in case he plays Iron Bark. Corehound will die to Deadly Shot as well. Especially because he didn't even play another minion to distract a deadly shot. So he's he just saw me play deadly shot. He's gambling. I don't have another one. I could actually trade the Yeti and like a storm pike in for this. I could actually play the wolf and just trade the Yeti for that. But really, I don't know. That's a pretty good target for deadly shot. And then I can use the high main, you know, plus the storm pike to kill iron bark protectors and whatnot. It's not a big deal. Okay, that, this game turned around right quick. Now we're, now we're in really great shape. Very happy with the two deadly shots I drafted. I still don't think it would have been worth it to draft like the third, fourth, or fifth deadly shot. There was a lot of deadly shots in that draft. My opponent is thinking a lot. Reckless Rocketeer, not really a good answer. Just a very expensive way of killing that Yeti. And he's shapeshifting. That's a slow way of killing me, my good friend. Slow way indeed. Well, the Hounds are not playable. Weirdly, the game will actually let you cast Unleash the Hounds, even if it's not playable. I think that's kind of silly. Gonna play the Wolf Swing. Do I play this thing out just as a 4-2 body? Shoot him in the face, kind of waste it. No. Let's instead take an opportunity to steady shot and get a loot hoarder down. I don't care if this dies to swipe or shapeshift because it'll draw me a card. Got another high main and a sea giant waiting for me. He's got an azure drake, which is fine. He's actually going to swipe to clear my board. Luckily though, high main's a pretty good card. I get these hyenas, which is pretty good times. Okay. Got a number of ways that I can kill this Azure Drake. I think I'm gonna choose to do it like this. And I'm actually gonna use the Wolf Rider rather than one of the hyenas. Because again, even though the Wolf Rider deals more damage, it dies to 
swipes and shapeshift. I will play... Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm not going to play Leper Gnome. I don't want to miss opportunities to steady shot because I am trying to race him down. Now I'm kind of out of juice. If he plays an Iron Bark here, he can actually win the game. I'd have to throw everything I have at an, at an Iron Bark Protector if he were to drop one. That is your Drake into swipe. That's pretty good. Does he have Son of Fury Protector or Defender of Argus to give this taunt? Because, well, I'm at 18 health. So this thing actually does kill me pretty fast. He's been plunking away pretty reliably. Ah, there's a Sea Giant. Okay, lovely. So we're going to go ahead and Leper Gnome. Sea Giant. Steady shot. Ah, uh, he could kill me. Like, if he has two swipes, he can actually win the game. But, uh, that's unlikely. Because he hit, hit me down to nine, shapeshift down to... Well, if he can hit me down to nine, and then, like, starfire plus swipe to burn me off. Oh my god, does he actually have the kill? He seems to actually have the kill. Savage Roar is just enough damage. <laughs> Wow, Starfire, Savage Roar, so all those shapeshifts at the face actually paid off for Mitchell the Druid. I needed a taunt, I didn't have one, should have drafted one, and that's the game. I'm not sure there's any way I could have avoided that. Uh, I mean, I could have killed the Molten Giant, I suppose, instead of hitting him in the face. But, I don't know, I feel like I took a reasonable risk, and whatever, we made it to 8 wins, that's a solid run. So thanks for watching, please like and or subscribe if you enjoyed that, and let's take a look at our prizes if you just want to stick around. Good... Ah, oh my god. I hate these common rewards. That's okay. That's 50 dust. But that was basically 5 dust there. I really think it should just get rid of... I'm glad they got rid of non-gold commons for 10 and up, but they should just really get rid of that. That just always feels so bad. And we have a completely ordinary pack. The only rare I really want to see is Armorsmith. I don't have any of those. I learned recently, by the way, that you don't need to have a complete set to get the achievement. You just need to have one of each card so that doesn't make it any easier for legendaries but it does mean that like if there's an epic that you don't have any of you don't need to craft two of them you just need to craft one to count as having a complete set so that dramatically reduces how much dust i thought i needed okay well that's cool let's take a sneak peek at our next arena and wrap it up for today we will have a run with warlock rogue or druid tough because i have a lot of runs with warlock and rogue i don't have as many with druid but i just recently did druid so we'll see probably i'll end up doing a rogue thanks again for watching and i'll see you again soon take care